In this video, I'm going to talk about MIDI capability upgrades you could do for your modern MPC. And I'm talking about like MPC-1, Live 2, X, that type of thing, or even the Key 37. What started me on this journey was the Key 37, actually, because Akai shipped a sneaky little feature that allowed it to be in standalone mode by itself and directly connect to the computer and send MIDI back and forth. That's not a feature that exists on the other MPCs. So it got me thinking, how could I possibly recreate that with an MPC-1? So behind me is a bunch of gear that I have connected on the wall. And in the past, I've connected it to the MPC-1 exclusively, which meant that I couldn't actually communicate directly to it on Ableton Live. Enter the Mio devices from iConnectivity. This video is not sponsored, by the way. They have no idea I'm making this video. So I ended up getting a couple devices, the Mio XM, which is the mid-range one, and then the Mio XL, which is connected on the wall back there. And I was able to achieve an interlinked type of system, which I will talk about here. So all this gear right here on the wall is actually connected to the Mio XL that I have set up directly underneath me. And what's awesome is that Mio XL is then connected via USB to the MPC-1. So through the Mio XL, all this gear can actually be accessed directly through the MPC-1 for sequencing. But it can also be accessed through Ableton Live because of the MIDI network. So as a quick example here, I've got track one. If I go to the MIDI port and I open this up, you can see all of these Mio XL connections. And I can turn these on and off in the software for the Mio XL and also talk to the Mac Mini on the computer to play something like Pigments AVST in Ableton. So let's go to the Mini Log and let's play this. So as you can see, I'm actually playing the Phantom 8 and it's connected to the MPC-1 and then that's sending MIDI directly to the Minilog XD. Now what's interesting is I also have DAW control to be able to go into Ableton Live and control things in Ableton Live via the Phantom 8. Now how did I set that up? It's actually pretty straightforward once you understand it. So the first thing is you have to use USB for the Phantom if you want to get any type of DAW control. So I do have the USB cable from the Phantom going directly to the Mac Mini computer. But then I also have the MIDI ports of the Phantom 8 connected directly to the Mio XL. So in the MPC-1 right here, if I actually go to the Mio XL Phantom EX port, I now have access to all the channels on this keyboard through that interface right there. So for instance, if I go back to zone view here, I'm currently on channel eight. And channel eight I have set up to basically just be a MIDI channel. So it's not triggering any sounds in the engine. It's actually just sending MIDI to the MPC. I actually have a whole video that I went into deeper detail a while back on this particular setup, but I didn't have the Mio XL setup. So this is slightly different so I can talk to the computer at the same time with all these instruments, but I digress. So channel eight is exclusively for sending MIDI directly to the MPC-1, which can then send MIDI anywhere else or trigger drum samples and all that. And right now it's actually triggering channel one on the Phantom, which is the soft and subtle. So let's say I want a piano sound. I'm also gonna mute the MPC channel right here because it's sending MIDI also. Let's go to that new grand. So all that MIDI can be captured directly in the MPC, which is fantastic. And then I can make another track on the MPC. I can once again go to Phantom EX. I can go to the second channel. And let's say, uh, if I look on here on the second channel, it's, uh, it's got analog atmosphere, which is this. And if I go to channel eight on the Phantom, I'm playing the same thing. It's just routing through the MPC first and then back into the Phantom. Now, something I haven't talked about yet is the audio routing, and it is a separate situation in this particular case. And you do need to keep that in mind. If you do have a bunch of instruments, you still have to connect them via audio in the traditional sense. So you need something like an audio interface that can support all of the inputs that you need, uh, or you need a mixing board or some sort of a combo of those two type of things. I personally use a Motu AVB network, so I have a ton of inputs and outputs I can work with and not have to repatch things all the time. And in this particular case, I actually have all three stereo outputs of the Phantom 8 connected to that board. So I believe this guy right here is going through its own sub out. Whereas channel one, uh, if I go over channel one, is going through the main output. And then if I go to channel three of the Phantom, 
This is going through sub-out two, I believe. Yeah, so it gives me some finer control for mixing and all that if I do separate three instruments out. If I want to use more instruments, then I just double them up on a particular output, you know. But essentially, I have control of all of these instruments, and I can also control them from Ableton on the computer through the MIDI network, which is pretty cool. So I touched briefly in that setup about the audio connections, but I just want to show on Ableton, I'm actually monitoring everything in Ableton. So Ableton's acting like a mixer essentially, or a digital mixer, which I could then multi-track to audio channels for actual mixing later on, or maybe even overdubs with vocals or other instruments. But essentially I have it set up so I can route any of those pieces of gear from the audio side directly into Ableton and listen to them. But now what I have is the capability of getting the MIDI track, which is really great. So I can actually go and output to network and you can see Argon 8, Cobalt 8. Like if I go Cobalt and then I start uh, input the monitoring, it's working. So this whole setup is connected right now from the network and it's also connected to the MPC-1, which I think is really cool. Now the issue with these devices is they can be a little on the complex side to set up. So if you are not aware of proper MIDI routings that would need to happen in the first place, you could run into some problems pretty fast with it. Now I'm not gonna step through everything I did because that would be a longer tutorial video, but there is lots of resources online to check out. And honestly, they've done quite a bit of updates to the actual interface to make this more user-friendly and functional. And this is the Oracle software right here, and I'm actually talking to it via the network. So it's not plugged in via USB to the computer, it's just talking over the network via LAN cables. And if I go to MIDI routing, you can see right here, I, you know, I've got like the Phantom RTP, and the Phantom RTP is going to the DIN MIDI and all this stuff. Again, I understand this can be confusing, and it's partially a user interface type of thing, but essentially you think whatever the input is, goes to the output and that gets you in a safe place, essentially. Um, but I do understand why people can get confused about this. If you go to the MIDI network routing, this is where things get interesting. And it also enables me to be able to talk to the computer with the gear and the MPC at any time. So I can actually recreate that MPC key 37 feature of being able to talk directly to the computer through this setup over the network. And for instance, let me just go back to Ableton here. If you look, I have network MPC-1 set up right there. So this directly connects to the MPC back there. Back to the Oracle software though. So in here you have the options of changing the names and setting up the initiator, responder type of stuff. And this is actually where a lot of hiccups can happen. One thing in this interface, I didn't realize that IP name were two separate things to click on. And so originally I was like, I'm trying to put an IP address into this box and nothing was working until I realized that this is actually a selector because just my brain Im immediately thought it's the IP name. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so that's just a little hiccup on my end that I had right there. And once I figured out that you just have to name it the, the names that you have listed on your computer, then the initiator will work properly. And I'll show you this on the computer as well in a moment here. But if I scroll down on this, you'll see all these other names from DeepMind 12, Cobalt and all that stuff. And these are all enabling the ability for the Mac mini to talk directly to those devices via MIDI, network MIDI. Now, if you look at this, these are all initiators. And I also have the name Mac Mini 1, Mac Mini 2, Mac Mini 3 and all that. These are all corresponding to things that I've set up on the computer. So if I go over to the MIDI network setup, uh, you'll see that I have these created right here. So DeepMind 12 is listed as a bonjour name as Mac Mini 1. And then Cobalt, Mac Mini 2, Argon, Mac Mini 3, and I have the local name set up as well. So the local name will be what shows up inside of Ableton Live. And then the Bonjour name is what the Mio XL or Mio XM will search for on the network to connect when it initiates it. Now, something that I didn't realize when I was first setting this up is that the actual Mac itself cannot initiate this connection. So if you're on the Oracle software, and you set this up as responders right here. See Mio XM to XL and Mio XL tests. These will only work as responders if you actually go over and uh, initiate the connection yourself manually in this interface. And you have to do that every single time you restart the computer. So if you have a lot of MIDI devices, this basically becomes an unusable uh, setup. <laughs> Unless you keep your computer on permanently, which for me, I don't like to do that. So I do like to turn off my computer when I need to. 
So this is actually really disappointing, and I'm kind of shocked that Apple hasn't taken the time to uh, add an initiator into this setup, because like this MIDI network setup is really powerful and it allows you to connect two computers across the network. So you could have a, a Studio A computer and a Studio B computer, and they could be talking via MIDI, uh, but every time you want to do that, you have to actually connect the MIDI connections, whereas the Mio devices will automatically do that if you set it up in the software as uh, initiators. And if you look down here in sessions and directories, you'll see, you'll see right here, things have a uh, an I in there, which means that they're initiating. And then the Mio XM XL and the Mio XL test, they don't have I, that means that they're responders right there. So in the network itself, it actually tells you what's what. So that got me into trouble right there initially. The other thing that got me into trouble was I had my Wi-Fi on uh, with the Mac mini and it was connected via the LAN cable. And what would happen then is the initiator would keep on connecting to it because it would be like it would connect over LAN and then it would connect over Wi-Fi and then LAN and then Wi-Fi and then LAN and the Wi-Fi. And it just kept on building up connectors. And I was like, what in the hell is going on? So finally, I realized it's because the Wi-Fi was on, turned off the Wi-Fi and that fixed that. But if you turn off the Wi-Fi, then you lose the capability of being able to have your iPad act as a double screen, which I was using at times when I'd be like in other spots of the studio. So unfortunately I lost that ability, although I didn't really use it as much, you know, the, the whole, I think it's called sidecar. Can't remember exactly. There's a feature in Mac OS when you have iPads that support it to basically make a secondary screen. Pretty handy if you have a bunch of synthesizers set up around the room so you can just talk to your computer. But again, you lose that capability if you have to have things plugged in via the LAN cable and turn off your Wi-Fi, because it only works over Wi-Fi for some reason. Yeah, those are the main two caveats right there. I believe if you're on a Windows computer, I believe the Windows software allows you to make initiators happen on the computer itself, which actually solves another issue that I am still trying to figure out. And this one, I don't know how much I actually need this feature technically. Part of me is just a tech nerd, so I like setting this stuff up. But I've been trying to get this XM to also connect to the gear on the wall. And the only way I could do it right now is if I have this Mio XM right here act as initiator to two responders on the XL. The problem is, if I go to the software here, that all of these instruments are acting as initiators. Technically, I have to make another set of these instruments as responders for the Mio XM to connect to. Or if I had a piece of software on the Mac that automatically initiated the connections, then I could have all these be responders. But as it is right now, I can't do that on the Mac. And maybe I'll figure out a way to write it in Xcode. If I do figure that out, I'll share that script at some point in the future. But uh, as it is right now, this is one of the hiccups, but it's definitely more of an advanced, advanced case scenario because my thought was if I have, let's say the MPC key 37 on the desk right here, and I have it connected to an XM, maybe I wanna connect to the synths on the wall, right? Well, technically I could do that with this type of setup if I set up the connections correctly on here. But again, I either have to set up another set of responders on the XL, so you know, so like DeepMind 12, and then I have another one right here, make it DeepMind 12 and make it be a responder. And then this would connect to that to then initiate communications. That's one way of doing it. <laughs> again, there you hit a certain limit as to what's actually useful in this. And the golden rule of less is more definitely kicks in pretty fast with this stuff. I don't use all my gear for every project all the time. I'm almost always picking four or five pieces and then putting them together and making a setup that way. So I'm well aware that these type of setups could become uh, excessive. <laughs> but as a tech nerd, I like exploring these possibilities and seeing what happens with it. I'll definitely leave some links below if you want to check out some of this gear, if you're considering it. Uh, obviously, this is something that makes sense if you have a lot of gear. Clearly, if you only have a few pieces, then I definitely wouldn't recommend going down this route because probably no need to, you know? But if you're like me, where you have a hybrid setup, sometimes you're working on the computer, sometimes you're working on the uh, NPC environments or, you know, other kind of like dollless experiences. For me, the flexibility of routing is pretty important because I find having to unplug and repatch things out of kind of like a, a permanent setup has a lot more friction involved for my creative process to where I just don't end up doing it, essentially. These Mio boxes are not expensive. You know, this is uh, 250 bucks, I believe, for the XM. So, I mean, not cheap, but it's also not expensive in terms of the audio world. The Mio XL sets you back 400 bucks and it uh, definitely has more features. Oh, also, something about this guy that I didn't realize is that it does have four 
USB ports right here. But if you put a USB hub into there, it actually expands it by four ports. So you can have a total of eight on here if you have a USB hub plugged into it. So nice little pro tip right there because I personally use the USB connections a lot more than the, uh, the MIDI DIN. I'll only use the MIDI DIN for a few pieces of gear, but I'm mostly at this point using the USB connections just because it's simpler. One cable takes care of the connection. You do have more network ports, I believe, with the XL though. So if you are trying to manage a bunch of different network items, if you do have a re really large setup and you need to have a bunch of connections, uh, I believe the XL is definitely going to have better network options for you. Yeah, I mean, the cons really are the setup can be a bit confusing and it does cost you more money. Uh, but once it's set up, it's pretty cool. And I feel like it's been reliable on the network so far. I haven't done any crazy MIDI, meaning like just a ton of traffic on the network, but I haven't really had any issues with the AVB stuff. So I don't think it's going to be an issue for timing on the MIDI. Maybe it will be in the future, I don't know. If you have any experience with the Mio type products and doing stuff like this, let me know. Drop it in the comments, we'd love to hear it. Uh, but overall, I think it's a pretty cool setup. I do wish the software was a bit more graphically friendly. <laughs> it's kind of missing that touch, but hey, you know, is what it is. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. Again, if you do plan on checking out any of the gear, use my affiliate links it helps out the channel so it's a great way of supporting the channel if you are interested in doing that in the first place but yeah thanks for watching i'll see you next time for another one peace